Finland is a democratic country located on the Eurasian continent in northern Europe, sandwiched between Russia and Sweden. This will be important later. We will go over the history and the too often ignored prehistory of the country in this series, from the first settlers until the present day. Finland is often titled the happiest country on earth. How did this distant land, plagued by foreign invaders, where the sun barely shines for most of the year, with a history filled with bloodshed and slavery, become a highly successful Nordic welfare state? That is the story I want to share with you, but properly not ridden with mistakes like some much bigger channels on YouTube. In a nutshell, the story of Finland goes from the first hunter-gatherers to a population of tribes or small kingdoms, followed by the medieval Swedish conquest and centuries of wars, followed by the Russian conquest and a great famine, with the rise of nationalism and finally the Russian revolution leading to the country's independence. But for now, let's go back to the beginning. Whether Finland was inhabited by humans before the last ice age, we don't know, as the ice sheet ground and wiped away any traces of human culture. The so-called Wolf Cave has been suggested as a home for Neanderthals some 120,000 years ago, although this is no longer supported by most scientists. If the Wolf Cave proved to be a true dwelling of Neanderthals, it would be a significant discovery. The first trustworthy signs of human habitation appear around 8800 BCE, as the ice sheet recedes. The map looked very different at the time, or would have looked had there been maps around, with the shoreline further back inland than it is today. The shoreline is also where people mostly lived, but would move seasonally, following the movements of game animals. They hunted for example moose, beaver and seal, and kept domestic dogs. The Proto-Finnic language was not a thing yet, so the speech balloons are not authentic, in case anyone was wondering. This period is called the Suomusjärvi culture, which was followed by more cultures of confusing names, which we will mostly leave out in order to not die of boredom. For perspective, it was around this time that the first cities started to appear in the Middle East. Very few artifacts from Finland survive from this period, due to the hostile soil. Coincidentally, not much can be said for sure about the beliefs of the people either. Some of the older Finnish creation myths are very similar to those found in North America. So it is likely that the primordial myths of the Finns and some Native Americans share common origins. The remains of Stone Age burials indicate no beliefs of life after death. So we can say that Tuonela, the realm of the dead, was yet to be established. Placing objects in graves became common later on. The Stone Age lasted relatively long. From around 2800 BCE onwards, a new god arrived in Finland. If you watched this channel before, you will hopefully have heard of him. I'm of course talking about Ukko himself, who would later be considered the most important of pagan Finnish gods. He was introduced by the Corded Ware culture that spread to southwestern Finland from the Baltics, and is also called the Battle Axe culture, which, I think we can agree, is a much more memorable name. It is no coincidence then that Ukko's weapon is a hammer axe, much like the tools of the period. Ukko would divide his godly duties with Ilmarinen, the previous sky god, who later became associated with iron. He also added the position of a heroic blacksmith to his resume. As agriculture spread and the lifestyle became less nomadic, Ukko took on the duties of guarding the harvest and weather which the harvest depended on. The so-called giant's churches on the shores of the Bothnian Bay 
were built around 3000 to 2000 BCE. This is roughly the same time as the Great Pyramids were built in Egypt and the Indus Valley Civilization was born in Southeast Asia. The giant churches were not built by the Battleaxe people, nor do we know what they were used for. Theories range from fortresses, offering sites, seal meat storages, to astronomical observatories. The buildings tend to have their doorways facing the direction of sunrises and sunsets of equinox and solstice days, much like other megalithic constructions around Europe at the same time. The Battle Axe people might already have practiced slash and burn agriculture. This cool sounding technique means burning down forest in order to create farmland. With this method the soil will only yield crops for a few years, which means constant migration. The slash and burn farming prevailed in Finland far into the 19th century. It is also thought that it was during the time of the battle axe culture that the presumed proto-language diverged to the ancestors of modern Finnish and Sami languages. That I wrote very ambiguously on purpose, as the exact family tree of the languages is not agreed upon. While we cannot prove that the practice of shamanism was a thing, researchers assume that Finnic peoples used to practice it as well. The shaman was a powerful figure who could communicate with and travel to the other world. That more or less concludes the Stone Age in Finland at around 1500 BCE. The Stone Age was followed by, as you might guess, the Bronze Age, although it initially changed very little in Finland. But more about that in the next episode. This has been the first episode of the animated history of Finland. Consider subscribing to not miss the coming episodes, and in the meantime check out my other videos about Finnish mythology and history. Should you like to support the tedious but time-consuming making of these videos, there are several ways you can rid yourself of your hard-earned money in exchange for what they call merchandise. Links are in the description unless I forgot to put them there.